I'm gonna walk you through nine of my favorite wedding poses that I use at every single wedding that I shoot. So first of all, welcome to so many of you that have subscribed recently. It's been very exciting and I'm so glad that you have found this channel and some of these videos really helpful. So today I'm gonna walk you through nine poses, nine types of photos that I really love using at weddings. And I am going to assume that you have watched a video that I already made a couple weeks ago about you know, how to take the best portraits. And I'm going to link that video if you want to click on it. I put together a little cheat sheet for you. So if you want to remember these poses, you know, when you're on a wedding day, you can print this off and bring it with you. And you can download that in the description. Before I get into the first one, it's really important for you to know that I never get my couples to be in a very rigid and fixed position. All of these poses that I'm going to walk you through today are very dynamic. Because something that's really important, and if you watch that video, it's all about making my couples feel comfortable. And no one ever has felt comfortable in a position where you're like, okay, hold here, put this arm here, tilt your head this way. Okay, don't move, don't move, don't move. Like, no one feels comfortable. No one feels really excited. And no one feels like giving out a lot of genuine emotion when you're kind of like, positioned in a very particular way. Instead, I give them a series of directions so that they get to that final pose uh, in a more organic way. Okay, let's go. The first pose is called the walking pose, okay? This, I do so much walking with my couples. We were actually shooting down by the waterfront and then we were just walking back to the venue. And as we were walking back, they were talking, they were looking around. Uh, it didn't really feel like we were taking many photos. And it was at that moment that I kind of had my camera a little bit low. I wasn't like, you know, okay, work it, work it. I was kind of like nonchalantly having my camera down and snapped this photo. And that's why it feels very relaxed and chill. And, and it's because they kind of felt like the photo shoot was actually over. This photo is a little bit more set up where we were shooting in this area. We had walked uh, through this beautiful tunnel and arches. And the direction I gave for them here was just, you know, for the groom to hold uh, the bride's hand and just walk a little bit ahead and come towards me. Uh, here's another photo very similar to the first one that I was talking about to where we were just moving from one area of the venue to another area. And he was just like actually helping with her dress. Um, I find there's such a huge difference when things happen naturally. Um, so I always make sure to be really ready and never, especially when we're moving from area to area, it's very easy to kind of shut off and be like, oh, okay, we're done taking photos. Let's go to the next area. No, those in between sections is when I'm really like looking for those really authentic, fun moments, which would never happen if I tried to plan that. Um, and so that's why uh, I love this one, like that smile, her looking back at him. Oh, I think it was great for this one. I didn't give them any direction at all. Of course, they just got married. They were walking down the aisle, but walking down and out of the aisle is the exact type of thing that I do uh, when I'm doing this pose is they're holding hands, they're looking at each other, they're looking away, and they're walking. Getting your couple to walk and move helps them feel more relaxed, more comfortable, and just a lot of fun kind of organic things happen when people are walking because they're not like necessarily thinking so much about the photo taking. They're thinking about where they're going, what they're stepping on, what they're walking on, all of that stuff. And, you know, there's so many variations that you can do with walking. This is a prompt that I gave them. I was like, oh, you should like put your arm around her and, and walk a little bit. And so getting your couple to do those things, watching them, see how they're interacting, and then giving them some prompts and some variations on the walking pose will, I think, give you some really beautiful images. The next one is the kiss. Now, this is a classic, right? <laughs> like, of course, you're gonna ask your couple to kiss, but this is not just any type of kiss. This is combining the walk and a kiss. 
And the reason is, is it, it kind of interrupts the flow and it kind of shakes things up. In all these scenarios, they're walking, they're doing something, you know, in this scenario, they're literally walking out of the aisle and they're like, yeah, celebration. And then I interrupt that walking with, oh, and how about you give each other a kiss right now? It kind of surprises them in a way to help them forget about me and think about, oh, we need a kiss right now. Um, and I think it gives some really great emotions. Uh, this one, for example, is I asked them to kiss and I took the photo. I didn't wait to take the photo until they kissed. I wanted to get all of those emotions. I wanted them think, thinking about it, thinking about like, oh, how are we walking and kissing? How are we going to do this? Um, and it creates some really genuine emotion. In this scenario, they were really like excited and happy about it. My next type of pose is the full pride portrait. I love these ones. At the beginning of every wedding that I shoot, I have this shot in mind as I'm looking at locations. I, I love this very grand, impactful shot of a bride, full body with flowers and everything. And typically when I like to get this image is at the beginning of the day. So, you know, these last two images, they had literally just gotten ready. They were just finished getting ready. And then it was boom, a perfect time to get that beautiful image. One of the reasons I like to do this at the beginning of the day is that they feel very special. They feel like they just turned into a bride, as it were. And those emotions, that elegance, that feeling of being a bride, just kind of exudes from this at this point. And it's, it's very easy in a way to get a great shot of them because all the emotions are already there. I don't have to kind of coach them or get them into a moment. They're very excited about their dress being on. And so capitalizing on those moments that are already happening is really important for me. I try to really think about, you know, when is the actual best time to take this photo? It's not always when I have the best environment. Sometimes it's when my couple is at the best kind of emotional state. Of course, there's other great times to take this full portrait, like halfway through the day. Another reason why I like to take several of these throughout the day, even if I have got one at the beginning, is that it's a really nice break. It's a really nice break when you're taking couple portraits to kind of separate them for a second, take some individuals of each of them, and I feel like it just kind of resets everyone. This is the groom version. As you can see, what is he doing with his feet? <laughs> He's walking. Most people, they hate that feeling when they're just like standing there and getting their photo taken and they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> am I doing the right thing? But when someone's walking, it just changes things completely for them. Um, and so, yeah, I'm often getting my grooms to walk while I'm taking their portraits. This is a great example of, you know, giving them something else to do while they're walking. So, you know, buttoning their coat, looking at their watch, doing something also makes them feel confident when you give them some specific variations to do. So they're not just walking and being like, oh, okay, what do I do? So it's like, okay, walk from here to this exact point. Walk from here to here and button your coat. Um, giving especially grooms some really clear direction in that way will help you get some really great organic images. So it's really easy to focus on the couple, obviously. It's really easy to focus on the emotions, obviously. That's your job as a wedding photographer, but don't forget about the vendors. Don't forget about the florals and all the details. It is your job as a photographer to make sure that you get not only the human element of the story, but everything else. And so honestly, these are some of my favorite photos to take. I do, I love flowers. We're so privileged to work with some incredible florists through uh, every wedding season. And like, ooh, come on, like look at these flowers, they're amazing. Um, but I always make sure to think about the florist, have the florist in mind. Um, like what kind of photos would they like out of this wedding day? These are some of my favorite, like getting really nice in with the ring and some of the details of the bouquet. And as you can see, these are almost like identical type of images, but from different weddings. Um, uh, and in this case, like this has a great detail of the ribbons of the bouquet, the actual bouquet, as well as the dress. You know, it pulls up some really nice details. So this I like to call the calm portrait. I typically do this when I also do the full body portrait. 
Um, but the reason I like doing this is because I want my brides to calm down. They have just, you know, been flying around, getting ready, having fun with their bridesmaids, their dresses on, their all the stuff is on, right? And I like to do this throughout the day. There's a couple of points where I do this really intentionally, but I ask the bride, okay, we're just gonna calm down here for a second. We're gonna be nice and quiet. I just want you to take a nice deep breath. I want you just to look at the camera. You don't have to smile, um, think happy thoughts, and, and just look right at me. And it's a very classic, very beautiful portrait where uh, you don't have a lot of emotion. I just, I just want to have a really calm, clean portrait. And this is not only like, yes, you get some beautiful images, but it's also for them. It's also for them to calm down for a moment and to soak it all in. And that's what I see myself as a photographer. I don't just see myself as the person who's taking photos and making sure that I get all the photos. But I make sure that while I'm taking those photos, how can I help in the emotions of a wedding day? How can I kind of pace my photos in such a way where we can do things that are high paced, lots of emotion? And then how can I slow things down? How can I, even myself, talk a little quieter? Not be so high energy all the time, but how can I calm myself down, talk to them in a really calm voice so that they can have a little bit of a break? They can calm down and they can soak in what's actually happening. Um, and when you do that, you get some really different types of photos. I think because it was a calm moment, uh, I just had this idea of like, oh, can you just like fix, you know, the side of your veil a little bit? And as she was doing that, I was like, oh my goodness, her ring is, her bracelets in, 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 in the shot, her, the rest of her dresses, like what a beautiful shot. Um, and it just gives you different opportunities than if you're just like kind of moving really fast all the time and have a lot of high energy. The seventh pose that I love to do on wedding days uh, is I, it's called the look back. Um, and it's not necessarily just always kind of looking back over your shoulder, but it's just that movement of, you know, the groom looking one way and the bride looking another way. It gives some tension. It gives some depth. It gives some interest to an otherwise kind of boring photo if you're they're just kind of always looking at the camera. I like combining this with, you know, getting my couple to walk. And it's something where you can easily say, oh, do you mind looking back at me? And then boom. Boom. As soon as they look back, you get the shot. And that's how this happened. They were standing there looking at each other facing and I asked one of them to kind of look back at me. Uh, and I got this shot here. Uh, same type of idea here where I'm getting I'm getting the bride to look at me and the groom is looking away or the groom is kind of looking back at her. Same idea here, but instead of looking away, they're kind of like looking right at the bride. And I call this a look back, even though they're not really looking back at me, but it's the idea of one person like looking at the bride or away, and then the bride looking back at the camera, or you can do vice versa with the groom. Um, but I often like having the groom looking at the bride and then the bride looking at me. Um, and then this is, oh, I love it. Like I love a good stairs looking back shot. Uh, sometimes you have to ask them to do it, but sometimes they're just like looking back at their dress or they're looking back at a bridesmaid or something. And that is a beautiful pose to get on a wedding day. The eighth pose is I'm calling the leave them alone pose. And that's where, okay, going back to kind of regulating the pace and the emotion of the wedding day and the shoot, um, when I feel like there's been a lot of kind of high energy, a lot of shooting, sometimes I, you know, tell my couple, okay, I'm just gonna leave you alone for a second. And I walk away from them. And I say, okay, you guys chat amongst yourselves and I'm gonna walk back. And I give them lots of space. So this scenario, I walked way back, let them talk for a little bit, and, uh, you know, something like this happened where he just like touched the side of her face. It was like really beautiful. Um, this was kind of similar. I know this is kind of like a walk, just like a walking photo, but it was a scenario where I was like, okay, we're going to walk over there. And I like, kind of walked away so they didn't feel like they were kind of getting their photo taken. Um, and then they were looking at each other. It's really beautiful. And then this one, oh, this is like one of my favorite examples of this type of thing is where, you know, the wind caught the bride's hair and the groom just like went to fix her hair and that is like oh you can tell that it's real there, there's I, I feel like if if that was posed you could just tell it, it never feels 
as natural. It doesn't feel as organic when you ask someone to do something like that. And when you step away and you give them the freedom to feel like they can talk with each other, they can kind of like lower their guard a little bit. That's when they do some little things like this that make that, that just like make the photo. These poses are similar to the floral shots that I was talking about earlier, the floral details. Um, but this is different type of details. Uh, this is, you know, for example, this is a getting ready shot and, and, and I'm focusing more on the shoe. Uh, this one where I'm focusing on the details of the bride's dress. This where I'm focusing on the dress and the ring and the getting ready section. But it's these kind of tight little sections of details that I love getting throughout the day. I know this is not really a pose, but I get these shots when my couples are in a different position for a different photo. Uh, but what I'm doing is while I'm doing another pose, that's a good time for me just to slip in and get a detail, right? So for example, I asked the couple just to, you know, face each other and get nice and close. And then while I was about to take some photos of the couple, that's when I also got some details. It tells the whole story, right? It tells, it lets you kind of get a closer look of, of the style and the fashion of her dress. Uh, and it's important to get those details that are not maybe standalone portraits, but they help support the portrait. This photo would help support kind of that full, you know, full body shot that I normally get at the beginning of the day. And it's important to get those details, not just the shot that you're looking for, but also the details that tell the full story. Okay, and the last one, this is number 10. This is the bonus pose. Uh, and that is just looking at the camera and smiling. It's really easy as a photographer, you're trying to be creative, you're trying to like get all these awesome photos that you forget about some of the most basic things. But it's important just to get a very simple traditional photo of just standing there looking at the camera. And while it's important to experiment, it's important to be creative, it's important to get all of those really artistic shots, I also make sure that I get some of the most important kind of traditional and classic wedding images.